slip out of our fingers would be a very big mistake. Janice Bergen is taking the podium, and Bill Crispell is on deck. Thank you. Um, I support the ban, and I appreciate the many, many, many hours you all have put into meetings and listening to the community. And this has been going on for years, and I'm not only grateful to this board, but the previous board for doing that, for sitting here for hours. And I think the community has benefited because we have learned how to listen to each other, and that might be the most valuable outcome of all of this, so that we can work together well in the future. So, there's so many things wrong with fracking, I don't know which one I'm the most scared of, okay? But I'm going to talk about two things. One of them is, the latest news is that over half of the counties in the USA are currently declared disaster zones because of extreme heat and the subsequent droughts. So that's one pathway we can go down. I've never talked about it much here, but, you know, it's not... We're not supposed to be emotional, and love is not real popular to talk about at political events. But in my heart, when I moved here, it was to fulfill, fulfill a dream. And I'm committed to being a good steward of the land I bought. And it's 32 acres, it's wetlands, it's diverse, it's ponds, it's wildlife, it's productive, we're eating from it, and I love it. And I'm committed to protecting it. And we have a town hall where anybody can go and get water out of the that's flowing freely out of the ground, that's completely clean, completely healthy, and safe to drink. Think about how many people don't have that in the world. We have one of the most precious things there, and you can't put a price tag on that. So I see those as our two scenarios. We can have health and free water, or we can have a disaster area. The other point I wanted to bring up is I'm very much in support of landowners' rights. That's why I want to take care of my land. But, but by the ban, protects me from being forced to have fracking under my land due to compulsory integration, which I cannot say no to if it's coming here. Nobody can say no to it. They're going to drill under you. You, you don't even get to negotiate a lease. Okay? It's forced on you. And now it's become apparent that the insurance companies, including Nationwide, who has partnered to be the number one insurance company with the New York State Farm Bureau, who thinks fracking might be good, that they're not going to cover anything for fracking because they're going to lose money and they can't charge enough to cover it and it's too dangerous. And when the insurance companies say no, thank you all. I appreciate your support in passing this ordinance. Everybody knows me, I'm Bill Crispine. Bill, just one second. This, this Everett's on deck? Go ahead. You're right. I've always been in the minority. I'm in a minority tonight, but that hasn't bothered me. My daddy says, try, don't cry. I'm on the positive side. We use energy every day. The fuel prices are going back up. I get five miles a gallon in my big truck. I got 10 to 15 in my little truck. We buy energy. We got energy right underneath us. Let's, every time there's an accident, whether it's a plane, train, or a golf accident, shut it down. Then we'll know we'll never have no more problems. We can have water. Every store you go in got a little water you want to drink. And if I was in Dimmick and I lost my water for my cows, I'd get out of town as fast as I could go. And if a ban goes in effect, and the gas companies come in and sue the county, the town, who pays for fighting them? Taxpayers. My farm's up for sale. 360 acres. The court took 52 of them away, so I ain't got to worry about that. Land rights. What if I says to you, you can't have a band party on your back door yard. You're telling me I can't harvest what's under my land.
good for you. I respect you. You're all educated, intelligent people. I've been in a school of hard knocks for 53 years. Never had much. Don't really want much. But if I get a little money out of the gas companies, I'll probably go buy some more toys. And then it's going to a children's hospital. I had a grandson with leukemia, eight years old, Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of the best cancer schools, hospitals for children. My daughter and family live right there. My daughter and son-in-law spent 45 days right by that little boy. When I first saw the picture of him, he looked like a string of suckers. Through medical science, which is money, everything's controlled by money. Even this thing, money, never had much, don't really want much. But I think I've worked a little bit. I got a brand new tractor order. It ain't got no seat and it ain't got no steering wheel. I lost my, if the band goes in, I've lost my ass and I don't know which way to turn. Thank you. Thank you. Missy Evans is taking the microphone and Jonathan Comstock is on deck. Yes, I'm Elisa Evett, and I have lived on Bald Hill for 37 years. I'd like to commend the board on its conscientious observance of the principles of democracy in holding these exhaustive public hearings on the matter of a ban to, in, in order to inform the public as well as to listen to and consider the concerns of the people of Carolina. I think you've done an extraordinary job, and I am very much aware of the enormous number of hours that you have put in on this matter, and I really appreciate it. This has been an intensely local issue in which we have all had to examine our values in terms of how we live our lives and how we affect others by the choices we make. But the concerns we have are not just local. The decision to ban fracking is part of a much larger picture, that of the huge, long, accumulating threat of climate change. By banning fracking and our small dot of a community on this vast and glorious globe, we are taking a small but significant step towards renouncing our destructive reliance on fossil fuels. The peer-reviewed study of the harmful cradle-to-grave greenhouse gas emissions from natural gas indicates that its contribution to climate change is irrefutable. By banning fracking, we will also take a stand against the gas and oil corporate overlords. I can't think of a better term to describe the most powerful of all corporations in our midst that buy their way into controlling our politicians, that prey on unsuspecting people who believe their lies, and who recklessly befoul our environment. In saying no to gas extraction in Caroline, we will be joining hundreds of communities around the world who are doing the same. Let us be on the leading edge of this movement to save our planet. I also just found out today from Carol Edelstein, who has done um, an, um, a careful research on and has created a map showing the uh, communities in New York State who have either um, have current bans or moratoriums, and she has discovered that the population of those towns, those municipalities, amounts to 1.9 million people. And the communities that have, on the other hand, um, put in place preemptive or um, pro-fracking resolutions amount to 178,000 people. That is a 9 to 1 ratio. I implore our trustees, and that is how I prefer to call you rather than town board members, our trustees, and take note of what that word means uh, to vote for the ban. Thank you. Jonathan Comstock is taking the podium, and Kim Wetzel is on deck. <laughs> My name is Jonathan Comstock. Uh, I've lived uh, in Brookendale for 20 years now, and uh, I support the ban. 
Uh, I encourage the board to uh, enact the ban when it comes up. Um, I know that uh, the nine months since the last election um, have felt very slow uh, to those of us who uh, earnestly desire a ban, and at the same time, I think for many people who feel that a ban should never be enacted, they have felt like a headlong rush. Um, so I realize that our town has divisions on this, but I think that um, when I, to me, the health, the health questions associated with fracking are the most important. I can argue back and forth on, on some issues that have two sides, but um, the consistent and persistent refusal of the DEC to even include uh, mandated health studies that were supposed to be part of the study. The, um, the gag rules and the impossibility to get most of the uh, information gathered into a coherent form that is enforced by the gas companies makes it impossible to view them as uh, conscientious uh, companies acting in good faith in, on these issues. And uh, recent studies like the one um, that Sandy mentioned by uh, Elaine Hill that actually are able to get a hold of a data set. These were birth records. It's a rare thing to be able to actually find some kind of meaningful health record uh, that you have public access to uh, and can, can compile. And uh, she's done a very thorough analysis of thousands and thousands of births, births that have happened in Pennsylvania since drilling, drilling began. And it's found this very substantial increase uh, in underweight babies uh, in areas uh, where the mothers lived within a mile and a half uh, of a well, of an active well. So, you know, I think this is the tip of an iceberg for a lot of, of health issues, uh, most of which are obscured, deliberately obscured, and um, I'm unwilling to give any benefit of the doubt to the companies that, you know, work so hard to keep us in the dark uh, to avoid having normal regulations from safe drinking and safe water and safe air acts. So uh, I encourage the band. I, I thank the board for what I think has been a very thorough process, um, frustrating to, to some uh, for being both too slow and too fast, but I think it has been a, a fair and open process throughout. So thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Kim Wetzel, uh, longtime resident of the town of Caroline, 40 plus years, 42 years or so, local business person in the community, um, and somebody that's concerned about the environment as we all are, and probably is why we're almost all here. <clears throat> My concern is that the town board consider my point of view as well. And I think because you have so many people here and there's so much hysteria about this issue. Oh, it's going to ruin your water, it's going to this, it's going to that. Probably a lot of people don't know, but there's a gas well right here in the town of Carolina. Were you aware of that, Mr. Barber? I'm not. Okay. It wasn't intended to be a gas well, it was intended to be a water well. But um, in the 50s, when I grew up on the German Crossroad, which is in the town of Dryden, and my father farmed the property on the Banks Road, where the Banks Farm is, where Eric Smith now owns and lives, okay? Right in the area, and I don't know because the bridge has been moved, uh, the bridge that go on the Banks Road used to be upstream several hundred feet, but right about on the far side, the Cottington Road side of that abutment, on one side or the other of it, there was a gas well. Drilled as a water well, but produced gas, was not used much as water. Um, used to be flared off, they used to have a little Bunsen burner, and as kids we'd go there and turn the thing on, it was kind of interesting. <clears throat> my concern to the board is that they take into consideration my ownership of property in the town, and the fact that I own over 300 acres here in central New York, and my combined school and property taxes are about $1,000. That's that's $1,000 every week. Yeah, every week. Now, I understand that I own more land than most people, 
and don't necessarily have the benefit of agriculture because I'm no longer involved in that, an agriculture exemption. So I would want you to really give this some thought and make sure that, that we don't just represent a vocal few. There are a lot of property owners and a lot of people that would like to see this developed. I would like to see it developed. I would be against a ban because I think it's going to come back and bite our town financially. I would, however, warrant and be welcome, welcome any restrictions that are reasonable put on to protect our infrastructure and to protect our health. Thank you. So Mark Whitmer is coming to the podium and Becky DeWitt is on deck. Hi, I'm Mark Whitmer. Uh, I've lived here for 10 years on Western Road. <clears throat> and I wanted to begin by uh, uh, briefly summarizing uh, a study that caused uh, some confusion in the, in the popular press um, in the last year, and that was the announcement by the EPA that the, the water endemic uh, was okay to drink. And on July 25th, the press release from EPA read, EPA has determined there are, that there are not levels of contaminants present that would require additional action by the agency. Uh, so a, a, a very brief history of uh, what happened in Dimmick that most of you probably know, but in 2008, hydrofracking began by uh, Cabot. Uh, on January 1st, 2009, uh, New Year's Day, a woman named Norma Fiorian Fiorentino, Fiorentino uh, her gas well exploded and cracked a uh, concrete slab. Uh, subsequently, uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental uh, Protection determined that uh, methane contamination had contaminated aquifers uh, under Carter Road in the area. Uh, and in late 2011, uh, they allowed Cabot to stop delivering, claiming that Cabot had met its obligations under a consent agreement. And in January of this year, EPA stepped in and to address citizen complaints of contamination, and so those were released this summer. And so I, I decided to look through the document, and I did that. It's, you can go right online and get it. And it's a, a PDF, 725 pages. So I'll summarize it here. I'm going to take a few extra minutes. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a list of the compounds found over threshold levels for drinking water, arsenic, chromium, lithium, lead, manganese, iron, barium, sodium, and methane. Um, and all these compounds are associated with uh, gas drilling. Arsenic at one well was 18 times the threshold trigger level for drinking water. Lithium occurred at up to 15 times the trigger level. Sodium occurred at concentrations up to 10 times the trigger level. And they, had, they have wells, companion wells, uh, that, uh, where the water is filtered. Um, and really, the only uh, elements for which filtration uh, was effective were uh, lead and iron. So the, with the filtered wells, the contaminants were just as bad. So um, I, I think that leads one to wonder how EPA could, could announce such a conclusion, and one has to think about the issue that many people speaking tonight have raised about the influence of money in politics. So, um, the local and global consequences of fracking uh, make it a bad idea anywhere, front yards or back. And we are all in this together, we are all neighbors. The best current information, uh, non-industry, indicates that the, the global warming consequences of this energy source would be devastating, push, pushing us beyond uh, tipping points. Uh, fossil fuels are not inevitable, and um, we know that. So. Uh, last fall's election and the Rouse petition drive were ringing calls for the adoption of the ban, and I urge us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. DeWitt is taking the podium, and Priscilla Timberlake is on deck. Um, I really wish to thank the town board for the hard work that, and long hours that they put into this issue. Um, I know they have a heavy agenda um, and have had to go above and beyond uh, in order to, uh, to deal with this. Um, I also want to thank, you know, both sides of the community because, you know, we 
really hung in there through a very long and arduous process. And I, for one, know that, um, you know, we're all, you know, reading and listening to, you know, what's being said and trying to, you know, think through the scientific peer-reviewed evidence that for some of us doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but, you know, we believe in the scientific process and, and we worry. We worry about our health and we worry about our community. Um, there isn't much that I can say here tonight that other people haven't said more eloquently than me. Um, you know, we can all look around Caroline and envision what it would look like if, um, you know, there, it was filled with fracking wells and what it would be like to have, you know, trucks traveling all over the place and the possibility of spills and all of that. Um, we also can look around and appreciate the beauty and quality of life that, for many of us, you know, we came and we bought here. Uh, so I just want to share a couple of thoughts. Um, water has been of special concern to me. Um, and just as I was pulling up, uh, the car in front of me, it's probably somebody in this room, uh, had a bumper sticker and I want to know where to get it. Um, it said, water is life, plain and simple. And that just is so true. I mean, that really is the essence of it. And um, we're blessed here in the Northeast. Um, I mean, we did have a drought this summer. and last summer. We don't know where that's going to head in the future, but in general, we have plenty of water. Um, that's not true in other parts of the country and world. Um, and we don't know where that's going to go as population increases and there's more demand for water, um, either through personal use or industry or uh, for agriculture. So we need to take care with it and and I I think that we we need to think beyond our own community and realize that what we do will have an impact in other parts of the state and perhaps other parts of the country and even Canada. Um, I'd just like to close with a, a true story that um, recently uh, happened to me. I was talking with a man who was, uh, he and his wife were looking to buy a house. And um, um, and he told me, he asked me where I lived, I said on Speed Hill Road. And um, he said, oh, there's a house for sale up there, my, my wife and I looked at it. And I said, what did you think? I'm almost done. And he said, okay. Um, he said, we looked at it, we liked the house, and, but we asked about fracking and they said that there was a lot of property fracked and so they didn't look any further. Thank you. Priscilla Timberlake is taking the podium and Lewis Friedman is on deck. Hello. Hi everyone. It's nice to be here. Uh, first I want to thank the board, as so many people have done before me, it seems it's really hard. You hear all sides, and some some things, it's difficult. I feel like it would be hard for me to do what you're doing. So I just want to thank you. And I've learned so much from you. You have so much respect for everyone, and this has been a great learning experience for me. This is about my fourth or fifth meeting, and I truly have learned quite a bit. Thank you. And I also want to thank everybody in this room. I feel really proud to be a citizen of Caroline. I just, you know, hearing all sides, everybody gets to speak, and it's, I think it's just wonderful. So I want to thank everyone. Third point, my own personal point, I'm one of those people that are celebrating the possibility that this ban will be uh, law. Every cell of my being is for this ban. I, that's my personal stand on it. And the last point I want to make, uh, did Pete leave already? Oh, Pete. Right here. Yeah, uh, I just want to mention that Sandy's not the only one that is really 
feeling like I'd like to support the whole New York State in uh, taking on this ban. Uh, Tioga County is actually only a mile and a half from my house, so I'm right there with Sandy's uh, sentiments. So anyway, thank you. Louis Friedman is taking the podium, and then Ray uh, Duncan. Duncan. Durkin. All oh, right. Sorry. Durkin is on deck. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So, I'm here to uh, support the democratic process. It's been a beautiful process. So thank you everyone for coming out and voting. Thank you for coming to these meetings. It's it's uh, uh, it just gives me a lot of faith and and uh, encouragement. So it's been really great. So with that, um, it was really interesting as I'm listening. Um, Bill made a, a beautiful gesture and seeing how many people are voting for, you know, how many people are here by their, their presence to, to support this ban, and it was a vast majority. And at the same time, there were a few people who spoke out against it, and it's just really interesting to me. There were only a few, but there was one person early on who made a point saying um, the board was elected to support a ban. Okay, good, good point. He was one of the priests who was against it. And the other person, uh, Kim Wetzel, was saying that some company drilled for something and got something else. Another good reason to support the ban. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, fully with support. Thank you. <laughs> so, Ray Durkin is taking the podium, and Carl Gibson is on deck. Um, thanks, for, thanks for being here um, to the board tonight and all your hard work. Um, I'm, I'm a newer resident of the town of Caroline. Uh, my wife and I have uh, owned our house for, for just five years on Speed Hill Road. It's the first home um, either of us has ever owned. Um, we've got a little boy, he just went home to bed, he was almost six. Um, I, I, I'm not somebody who's done a lot of research on fracking and, and um, I've heard some folks who were against a ban and, and, and want to hold their property rights to be able to um, to um, have some have some money earned through leases with gas companies. I appreciate um, that um, the board and the majority of the town of Carolina in their recent voting, um, in order to protect the majority, it is limiting some of your rights. Um, I grew up in Sullivan County, New York. Um, my grandparents uh, own 52 acres of land which my mom just inherited because she's you know, getting to that age and my grandparents are passing on. Um, she may not be able to continue to afford to keep that land in the family and yet um, as much as she's not somebody who's a big environmentalist she feels that she would never sign a lease um, to have the, well, the land used in that way. So I, I feel for anyone who owns a lot of land and pays a lot of property taxes and yet, I really do believe that this needs to be in place to, to, protect, to protect the majority. Um, it, if it goes forward that the state you know, overrides it in some way, well then we've done our bit at the local level to, to try to protect our future and our children and, and our water. So thank you very much. Gibson is taking the podium, and Cassandra Barino is on deck. Hi, I have uh, land on Downey Road, and um, I didn't really research this until just a couple years ago, but when I started looking into it, there's just way too much danger of water and air contamination, and uh, there's way too many cases in other states of people uh, getting really sick and uh, groundwater and water tables getting really polluted. So. Uh, yeah, uh, so I'd like to see the, the band passed. Thank you. Sandra is taking the podium, and David Culver is on deck. So I've been a resident of Slateville Springs for the last seven years. Um, in Brookdale for a year before that, I used to live up on Snow Farm for a while. Um, water, as a lot of people have said already, is 70% of what we are. And we are really lucky to have a lot of it here. I'm a graduate student at Cornell, and I heard a professor one day get up and tell us that all of us tree-hugging hippies are against fracking, but do we know how much money is under the ground? 
And I want to ask him the question, do you know how much water is going to be worth in 10 years? <laughs> so thank you guys for supporting this band, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to go through and we're going to not have fries here so that I can keep my property. Or if this band doesn't go through, I'm pretty sure my next step will be to sell it and get out. David is taking the podium, and then John Paulstrom is on deck. I'm David Carver, and I don't actually live here, but I house hit here frequently for people at 1036 Schneider Hill Road, who happens to be an ornithologist, so birds were mentioned, and um, birds are very important to Steve Kress, who lives at this house. It's full of pillows representing the puffin birds, where he is now on East Egg Island in Maine, uh, supporting I come from uh, <clears throat> Village of Aurora, which is in the town of Ledyard, which most people haven't heard of. They've done a uh, mortuary or band in that town, including a, a unanimous by the uh, town council, including one person who was my landlord for a while, and we had various arguments politically, um, and it's hard to believe that he supported the band or mortuary. Bill Heary, his wife, is head of the Democratic Party in Auburn. So dollars here, that's what we're talking about, aren't we? This is all about money. You can't drink money, you can't eat money, you can't breathe money. But some people seem to think it's more important than life. And um, it's sort of like a, a little um, myth. We, we like to think we don't have any myths, but this is certainly a myth that money is more important than anything else in life. I would say that life is more important than anything else for most people. And they don't begin to realize it until they're actually threatened, or their wife or their child gets cancer, children getting cancer at age four, five, six, isn't there something wrong with that? We're living in a sea of carcinogens and now we want to add to it. I grew up in Niagara Falls. My father was a chemical engineer and was on the board of education in the city of Niagara Falls. So the canal accepted that piece of property. My father was president of the board of education also. We had some discussions about that a little bit. After the fact, I was long out of the house by then. Uh, we can make a lot of love canals around here, can't we? Just a little bit of time. No one talked about how long it's going to last to keep these things underground if we frack. And um, I think that might be something that we might take into consideration if we have any uh, aspects of selling our souls um, um, without re regards for the future. Um, this isn't going to go away, by the way. If we um, convince Governor Cuomo who's received in excess of $150,000 from the industry, and has promised you can be assured 10 or 100 times that amount if he allows us to go through, Cuomo has ambitions. Andrew Cuomo is an ambitious person. And um, putting uh, moratoriums and bans in place um, helped to convince him that it isn't a really good idea for him to uh, allow this to come to pass in New York State. Kalstrom is taking the podium, and George Schellenbeck is on deck. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my name is John Kalstrom. Our family moved to Slaterville 69 years ago. We have 350 acres that we farmed, and now it's uh, actually in organic beans, but uh, we haven't leased the land yet. But uh, I'm, against, I'm against the ban. I don't understand it, frankly. Uh, I could ask you one question. New York State is apparently the largest consumer of natural gas in the country. If natural gas were removed, what heat would you folks go to? Nuclear? Uh, coal? Uh, wind? Solar? Which blow half the time and shine half the time? Uh, could we burn wood? Or do we sit in a, in a darkened phrase? Uh, uh, we're not going to get an answer to that right now. Is your attorney here, Mr. Barber? Yes, not. Okay. Could I ask you to answer a question at the next meeting? So two questions, if you might. Sure. Uh, Dryden was told by their attorneys when they did their ban that they would have no legal ramifications. I read that in the newspaper. Uh, they have a lawsuit against them today. Could you try to find out what their bills are to this point? That would be an interesting question to make available to the community. Uh, you have the, the same ability to get that information as I do. 
Pardon me? You have the same ability to get that information as I do. You don't want to do that? I will do that. I just Thank you. Know. No, 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 well, I'm not here. I'm not here constantly. I mean, you are. Uh, just a, a question. <laughs> Would you do that for the people? Tell them what the legal bills in Dryden are to this point. It'd be interesting. Uh, secondly, what I've not heard, I was at a meeting in December, and I'm not always here by any means, but I've heard nobody speak about uh, the concept of uh, the Constitution saying there should be no taking without just compensation. And the last, I'm not an attorney, and I'm not all that smart, but the last thing I saw about uh, takings were lawsuits, been el elsewhere, but they were in, in the Carolinas, north of South Carolina, and a gentleman had bought a uh, beach lot and intended to build a house on it. And the state of one of the two Carolinas said they decided they didn't want any more houses built on the beaches. So he said, well, fine, um, I just paid $200,000 for the lot, I was going to build a house on it, buy the lot from me, and I guess I'll, you know, we'll, we'll call it even. And they said, oh, no, 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 we're not taking the use of the lot. You just can't build on it. It's your lot, but you can't build on it. Well, <laughs> would you ask your attorney, what would happen to the town of Caroline if a, a, a class action suit is brought for the taking of the, the mineral rights from people, which is something they own? And if they can't use them, like this gentleman in South Carolina couldn't use his lot to build a house on. Maybe the state of New York or the town of Caroline or somebody owes them something. And what could that do to the, to the, the community? And lastly, there, since... Your three minutes are up. Okay, Sorry. last question. Since Dryden is already doing this, why in hell are you doing it? <laughs> okay. Uh, Schellenbeck is on deck, they're speaking, and then Joseph Massaro, I hope I got that right, you can help me when you come up. Hi. Uh, seems like there's a lot of preaching to the converted going on around here, like most people are against it, but for the few people who would like this to proceed, and I kind of support the ban, I guess it seems like it's all about the money. You know, not everybody's doing well, and I was just reading that natural gas right now is at like this huge low, because they frack the heck out of the place. Natural gas is everywhere, and if we wait 50 years, natural gas isn't going to go anywhere, and we'll be able to get much more money for it. <laughs> we just hang on. So, for those of you who are opposed to it, it's great. For those of you for it. Just think about the fact that we could get more money later. <laughs> so, uh, Christine, unless we have uh, any other names, this is our last speaker. Joe, can you help us with your last name? Oh, Joe Massaro. Thank you. Um, I'll just make it clear right now, I'm sponsored by the industry. Uh, I'm not here on their behalf. I'm here for my job to report these and go back and report on what happened. Um, that being said, I live in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, I travel to Dimmick at least three to four times a week, talk to people there. Um, the ground zero of, you know, hydro fracking. My family's from Rock County, New York. Uh, fracking comes up to this area. It'll be, uh, they'll be, you know, developing in the Delaware Water Basin area. There is leases up there, so I don't know who said that there weren't, there are. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I came from the wine industry before this. I did a lot of work up in Finger Lake, so uh, you know I'm not, you know I'm here to just kind of talk to you. And uh, I heard the gentleman say about arsenic. Was it barium? Arsenic uh, during the Civil War was used to embalm bodies. So think about the, the amount of bodies. I think I did the math. I think it was up upward of tonnage of arsenic under within uh, six feet in the surface of the ground. So that's where the arsenic comes from. Um, that's not me saying that. Uh, Brian Orm is a geologist. He has multiple degrees. He lives in Pennsylvania and not sponsored by the industry. He gets no money from the industry. Uh, if you go on my, the site, you can go and talk to him. He'll meet with you, actually. Uh, he does a lot of water well testing. Um, one thing people here should be uh, kind of coming down on is the, <coughs> the um, water well uh, regulations. There are none. 
that's why the, my, the methane is migrating to the wells. The industry is one of the highly, most highly regulated industries in the world. So, okay, you know, everyone laughs at the Halliburton loophole, I know all that. Um, that's not true if you actually go and get the facts about it. That's not the case. Um, I applaud the man who actually took drill, drilling sites and took tours on them. I go to them on a daily basis. Uh, I ask all of you to go and do that and ask the, you, before you vote on this, I mean, this doesn't really affect me. I'm just here on behalf of the people who are misled. And uh, I, like I said, I applaud the guy who took uh, the time to go and go to a drilling ring. I should ask all of you to do the same. I know it changed the way I look at it. Um, right before I took this job, I was in the wine industry. Right before I took it, three days before I took it, I watched Gasland. Um, scared the hell out of me. Uh, I came into this industry not knowing much about it. Uh, like I said, watched Gasland three days before I took the job. And I came here and I got the facts and I got the right information. And that's why I can stand up here and say that I don't see a problem with this. Like I said, I travel to on a daily basis. I talk to the litigants who are against it. I ask you all to go and talk to those people. Uh, I ask you people, wrong car to road, take a drive down. Go ahead, take a drive down. I don't know many of you have. I'm not I'm sure many of you haven't done that. And I ask that you do that. And I do that. And talk to people who are directly affected by it. All right? That's all. Thank you. We have one final um, person I'd like to address the town board on this hopeful law, and that is Chris Martin. Hello, thank you guys. Uh, my name is Chris Martin. I live over on Cottington Road. I've been in the valley for about five years now. I'd like to be here for a while longer. Now, my uh, I'm a physicist by training. I've been reading a lot about this the past several years. My main concern is drinking water. And the thing that I look at is, once they drill this well, they put these well casings in, it has to protect it forever. Now, forever is a very long time. They've shown that doesn't work. They've shown this last six months, there's been several papers that directly correlate the proximity to the drill site to the pollutants in the well. These are coming out in good peer-reviewed papers. These are coming out with backing information and backing science. The science is there. This is not something they can protect us forever from. That means that a matter of time, this is going to be bad for us. There's no reason to rush into this technology or that technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Radon's another thing that I really fear. A lot of my studies earlier, my PhD was on uh, radio, um, <clears throat> the effects of radon in the environment. Uh, shale slates, stuff like that have more uranium in them. We frack that, the radon will be more uh, mobile, we will have more polonium and thorium end up in our drinking water, henceforth also in our body. Uh, it's not so much the radon that's the problem, that's just the gaseous phase when it can move. As soon as we break those rocks, that radon moves, it becomes the other materials. This is the other radioactive materials coming up in the fracking fluid. This is something that is not able to be removed. It's going to be there forever. So I want to thank you all for coming. Um, having no other persons but willing to, ready to speak, I will close the public hearing to let um, people know about the process. The town board needs to do a secret review of this uh, local law and its effect. So we will be doing that, holding a public hearing and doing that on September 11th. And after that time, we are in a position that we can vote on this local law if we're ready. There'll be a discussion prior to the vote, a board discussion. They will be. The board can always talk. And we do. So that'll be a little thing right Yeah, and actually, uh, for those of you that have been interested in this subject, um, it'll be, I think it'd be worthwhile to hear what uh, how your board has processed, what they've learned, and why they were voting the way they are. Very instructional. So I want to thank you all for coming. And most, most importantly, as many others have said, for respecting each other and being gentle. Thank you. Good night.